Well, good morning, everyone. It's uh, January 11th, and just barely still morning. Getting another morning with a late start, but I had a good cause. I I had uh, two uh, sticks find a new home yesterday, and I had to uh, adjust their length and and uh, put the rubber foot on. So that took a little time this morning. So. And I've cleaned up the work area a little bit. And I'm ready to get started on doing the uh, detail work on the monster stick. Now because I'm going to be doing some very intricate work on the stick, I'm going to make some sketches on a separate piece of wood and make some practice carving and practice cuts on that piece of wood uh, just to uh, see how it goes, trying to do the close detail work that I need to do on, on this particular stick. So, I'll let you watch as I do a little bit of that and uh, then uh, I'll get set up to actually do some of that same work on this stick. So stay tuned, I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I'm going to show you now what I'm going to attempt to do here and how I'm going to attempt to do it. Um, recently I was out driving around here in uh, southeastern Arizona and I snapped this photograph. And this rattlesnake was very accommodating. He just sat there and let me take his picture. Now, what I'm going to try to do today is recreate the rattles. So I've sketched just a very crude outline on this piece of wood, and I'm going to try a variety of uh, of uh, various burrs with the WEN rotary tool and see how I can carve this out. Now you notice there's a horizontal line running lengthwise which corresponds to a, a groove that resides right down the middle and the top of the uh, uh, rattlesnake's rattles and the very first rattle at the bottom of the snake, this one here is always uh, very black. The others are a lighter color, very similar to the color of this piece of wood here. And they get progressively smaller as you move towards the, uh, the tail or the end of the rattles. And then just a little nubbin out there on the end. So that's what I'm going to try to create. I have another photograph here that kind of highlights a a rattlesnake's tail, but this one has m many fewer rattles. This one's got one, two, three, four, five, five rattles, as opposed to the 13 rattles that are on the, the snake that I got the photograph of. So, and uh, I think for this uh, carving, I'm going to do like maybe nine rattles and see how that looks. Uh, I think my snake on my uh, walking stick is much smaller than this this guy was. So I'm going to sit down and, and try try this and I'll sh show you my results in a little bit. Okay, these are some of the burrs I'm going to try working with today to see how I get the best results on this particular bit of carving. Uh, I've used all of these at one time or another and had varying results with varying kinds of wood so it's kind of trial and error so we'll see what turns out and what doesn't. Okay, these are the burrs that I planned on using 
and didn't. None of these would have worked out for what I was doing. I started with these two and didn't like the result I was getting. They weren't um, abrasive enough. And so then I switched to this one and this one and got the better better results. Uh, they were more aggressive but easier to control and this little guy here was very good on fine lines as long as I was careful. Now I'm not totally happy with my results The lines are a little shaky and the spacing's kind of off. And what I think I'm going to do is take what I learned doing this and I'm going to practice one more time and use what I learned and see if I can't make this come out just a little bit better. Now obviously this hasn't had any sanding on it. And, and the finished product will. But I think my uh, spacing on my rattles are too inconsistent and the lines are too wobbly and the shape's not right. And I think that when I drew this I had my lines too close together because the bit takes out some of the width of the um, rattle and I, I need to compensate for that so when I draw my next one I'll uh, get them a little farther apart but I'm going to go find another stick to practice on and I'll, when I get it line, lined out I'll show it to you. Okay this is my new drawing on a new stick I prepared. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to tell but the, the, this stick is more true to the shape of the one the monster stick. It's rounded on the sides and undercut just slightly at the bottom of the rattles and you can see that I hope that the rattles are a little bit farther apart and I've got fewer this time I think there's nine here on this one now counting the the tip one and uh, you'll notice the one here at this end that I've darkened in uh, that'll be the black band that always starts the rattles and it eventually it changes color as the uh, rattle grows on. So I'm going to start trying this one here and I'll uh, show you what it looks like when I get done. Right now it looks like a beehive to me. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what it looks like when we're done. I'll bring you back. Okay this is the result of the first pass now, I colored it in with red to make it stand out because the blonde wood it doesn't stand out too well. But uh, as you can see, the uh, rattles are more clearly defined by s shape and size. Now, I'm going to have to undercut them a little bit down in this area here on the sides. So 
Sorry about jiggling the camera there. Changing hands. Undercut down here to give them more definition. Yeah, I used the larger burr to make the line down the middle and then I used the the really tiny uh, engraving burr similar to this one only much much smaller to do the lines around each one of the rattles. I used a much lighter touch on the on the wand also. Okay, this is a little side-by-side -side comparison. And it shows how poor of a job I did on my first try. I am certainly pleased with myself for practicing and learning how to do this and get a better result. Because if I'd have tried this the first way on the monster stick, I would have ruined it, that portion of the stick. So I'm going to go back now and do a little undercutting on the side of this stick and uh, a little bit more shaping uh, at the very corners of each one of these uh, junctions between the right side of the rattle and the left side of the rattle and the center line. So I'll be back. Okay folks, uh, I've finished uh, practicing and uh, I'm getting ready to uh, start doing finish work on the monster stick. I have laid out the rattles. Start carving those tomorrow morning. And I also finished out the base of the stick because that had been left pretty much as rough wood like that. So all I've got to do tomorrow before I start power carving is, is some really good uh, finish sanding to make sure I have no divots left anywhere in the stick the whole length or any places I want to blend the snake to the stick any better there are a few spots but hopefully sometime tomorrow I can get started on the detail I've really been looking forward to that so that's all for today I'm going to take the stick in and weigh it because I did uh, trim off a little bit down there at the bottom end so this area right here might have get, gotten off another ounce, who knows. Okay, see you tomorrow. Well, I uh, weighed the monster stick. I can still exercise with it. It's uh, two pounds, eight and a half ounces. Well, it will still get lighter, I guarantee. I have a plan for it that will lighten it up. Although what I start uh, coloring the uh, snake that's going to add weight back into it from the weight of the paint. Here's the uh, uh, rattles that I'll start on tomorrow. And that's it for today. I'll uh, start loading this uh, video up to uh, YouTube, but it won't post until tomorrow. I always try to do two days at once. So, see you tomorrow. Good morning. I see it's time to get to work. This is uh, January 12, and it'll be day 12 working on the monster stick. 
But I do have a little bit of other work that I'm going to have to do right off the bat. And I'll show you here what that is. You can see these two sticks lying there on my little workbench. Uh, these have both found a new home and I have to do the finish work on them. All of my sticks are cut to length when I have found out who's going to be the final owner on them. Uh, no stick is a universal length to fit all people so this one here is a cane and I've already set it up to put the rubber foot on and I'm going to nip off this little bump right here and make it a smooth transition to the uh, rubber foot and then I'll uh, put a little varnish on that one. This stick's already completely varnished and ready to go other than that. The other one is this walking stick. This is not a cane, this is actually a walking stick. You can grip it here like this. And uh, the owner on this one selected it before it had, had been varnished. And so I've got to put the uh, varnish on it. It's had, had the first coat and uh, today it'll get sanded with 400 grit sandpaper and a second coat applied. But that won't be until uh, this evening after the warms up out here because it's still too cold to varnish right now. I've already trimmed the bottom for the rubber foot, which will slide on there once I remove the hook. And these hooks are pretty handy. You can uh, reach down on the ground and pick things up. Uh, here's a electric cord. There's all kinds of uses for these. However, I removed the hook. This is only used to uh, hang the stick while it's being varnished. And there you see it hung. So anyway, I'm going to get busy on these, get them knocked out right quick, and uh, get down to some serious work on the monster stick. Okay, I'll show you the two sticks that I have to do a little bit of finish work on. First one is, is this one here. This is not a cane, this is a walking stick. You can grip it here like this. Uh, I have short, shortened this stick for the new owner and uh, I have already finished the, the bottom for uh, putting on the rubber foot. Which looks like this. This stick was selected by the owner before it was uh, varnished. And so yesterday evening I put the first coat of varnish on it, and this morning I will uh, sand it with 400 grit uh, sandpaper and prepare it for its second coat of varnish, which will get put on this evening. And eventually, I will remove the hook. It only serves one purpose, and that is to hang the stick up while it's being varnished. The other one I'm going to work on today for just a little bit is this cane. This one was already finished with the all its coats of varnish and polishing, but it needed to be cut to length and have the space made to uh, fit the rubber foot on it as well. And I've decided that I'm going to take off this little nubbin right here, make it a smooth transition into the place for the foot. So that'll require a little bit of cutting and, and then uh, some smooth sanding and and reapplying a little bit of varnish around the bottom. So those are my two quick projects this morning 
This shouldn't take me too long and I'll get, be able to get on, busy on the monster stick. The monster stick is waiting just off stage. It's, it's right over there. I'm not sure, can you see it? It's right over there. Well, maybe you can't see it. But it's there. I promise it's there and I'll get to it. So stay tuned and we'll be back for a little bit more and when I get these uh, two sticks done. Yes, it is 1120, uh, but I have been working on the monster stick. I just uh, didn't have the camera set up. Battery was dead and and uh, took it in to get it recharged. So, but I worked on the stick anyway. I initially was going to work on uh, the uh, detail work on the snake's rattles. Let's see if I can get them into focus here. And, uh, but I realized that I had a f few uh, minor problems that I needed to take care of before I did that. I had the snake's uh, head shape wrong. Uh, I'm gonna, give me a moment here. I'm going to turn out some lights and see if I can make this show up better. There. Actually, that's quite a bit better. Um, the snake's head actually has a um, rounded part back here rather than curving this way. And I think that's the uh, back of the jaw bones. So I'm, I'm going to put that in with uh, hand, heavy grit, uh, ha hand sanding. And then I'm also going to change the, um, the front of the snake's head as well. It's, um, needs to be a little bit more blunt. And it also will have some, um, indentations around the front. Yeah, I was hoping this picture would be clear enough that you could see it, but maybe you can there. I come in really close. You can see the kind of the lump at the back of the jaw and the indentations around the eye. So anyway, I'm going to work on that and uh, I think I, I can uh, film some of this and you can watch while I work. Sorry about all the herky jerky with the camera here. I know my uh, lighting has been off quite a while. I'm working on ways to try to improve the lighting. What do you think? Is that any better? I'm going to leave it like that and uh, give it a shot and see what it, how it turns out. I'm using a 60 grit sandpaper to put these curves in at the back of the jaw, and this is how I do it. I just roll up the sandpaper and grind like that. I thought about using a file, but I decided I wanted to go very slowly and see how it turns out, so use the sandpaper. I could have used the Dremel too, but again, I, 
I just think that um, a slow, cautious approach on the finer details is better. So we'll see how this goes. It'll take it'll take some time. Decided it would be better to do this um, banging around with the stick without the detail work done on the uh, tail. I didn't want to hit it on anything and, and mess it up. So this is what you get. I've been reading a book about uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Now, there's no comparison between what I do and what Leonardo da Vinci did, but, but I'm learning some things. He uh, studied the anatomy of uh, the human body to better enable himself to uh, paint or sculpt or draw the human body. And uh, I am not an artist by any stretch of imagination, but I found that it's important for me to really study some photographs and, and uh, artwork and stuff like that to figure out how to get this uh, snake as right as possible anyway, so. I don't think I'm gonna do uh, snake dissections, which is one of the things that uh, Leonardo da Vinci did, was actually uh, did the human, human dissections on cadavers for the sole purpose of studying the uh, how the muscles were shaped and the skin was attached and things like that. So well, I'm gonna turn the camera off here. I know I know you must be bored, so I'll uh, get back to you when I get a little bit of this uh, shaping done on the on the head, so you can see what it actually looks like. Okay, it's 3.35 p.m. and I'm ready to knock off for today. I'm tired and I guess I got an early start. I'm not sure I have a lot to show for it, but uh, I, I'm still pleased with what I accomplished. I'll, I'll give you a shot here of the monster stick and let you decide. Sorry about that, my big feet hit the tripod. I was going to start on the detail on the stick today and I realized that the snake's head was the wrong shape. So I sanded in with uh, just a piece of rolled up sandpaper the uh, I guess it's the jaw joints of the uh, snake at this point here. Now, I also started with sandpaper on both sides where the eye sockets are going to be. This would be kind of the ridge of the eye here, the top. The eyeballs underneath here and here. But the other thing I did that took a lot of time is I decided I needed to blend this, the snake into the stick more. And so I did a lot of heavy sanding 
along the edge of the snake where it joins the stick. And blended it in more. And then I uh, also wanted to get all the heavy work out before I started the detail work. I hadn't decided how to finish the uh, top of the stick. So I decided I was going to leave it pretty much natural. I just smoothed down all the edges and gave a kind of a rough sanding. I'm going to finish sanding that smooth tomorrow. And then I also uh, went over the whole stick with uh, 220 grit. Uh, well, I went over the whole stick with 120 and then I went over it with 220. Now there's still sanding marks in it that I need to work on getting out and I can kind of work on that as I go, I think. Uh, I just don't want to do a lot of heavy sanding on it. Now, the snake itself, the body of the snake, pretty much blends right into the stick now because they're the same, same color and you're kind of losing in the, in the detail. But uh, as I start adding the, the fine details, the scales and the eyes and jawline and nostrils and the uh, rattles down here at the bottom, it'll start, it'll start reappearing, I'm hoping, so we'll see. Uh, no weight on the stick today. All I did was sand on it, so it'll probably be the same. Now, part of the reason I'm going to knock off is these sticks that I mentioned this morning. Two here. The one on the right, I uh, ground off that nub and then smoothed it down. I didn't grind it off completely, but I ground it off so it, it sloped down into where the foot's going to be. And I uh, gave the one on the left a complete sanding with uh, 400 grit sandpaper and uh, it's ready for its second coat of varnish. The one on the right will just get some varnish around the tip area. So that's it for right now. I'll uh, touch base with you one more time before I put this to bed. Thank you for watching. Well here's a little uh, post-production review of today's work. I'm cleaned up, got the shop cleaned up, I'm sitting in my office and here's what was done today. Changed the shape of the back of the head. Not a whole lot. Did start the uh, uh, cut in for around the eye sockets. And did some finish sanding and some smoothing on the top. Wasn't sure how to leave the uh, top, so I kind of decided I'd just leave it, you know, semi-natural. Uh, smooth down the rough edges. Uh, leave this knot with a little piece sticking out on it. And I did some uh, 220 grit sanding the full length of the stick. To I don't have to sand it later, or don't have to sand it as much later. So that's it for today. I'm going to get this stuff transferred to YouTube and posted.